All right. Let me bring this thing home. All of us, all of us, tell, tell your name, say all of us, are equal when it comes to salvation. Come on, say we're, say we're equal when it comes to salvation. But all of us are not equal as it relates to gifting. That's why the scripture tells us of one and two talents and five talents, even a hundredfold talents. There is no need for you to be sipping on hater aid because of her gift. There is no need for you to be drinking hater aid because of his gift. You uh, come on, can I get a witness, somebody? God said to Cain, if you do good, you will be accepted. Come on, tell somebody I can't do everything. Come on, but tell somebody I can do something. <laughs> yes, God wants you to work. Forget about hating on his gift. Forget about, uh, about somebody else's gift. What about your gift? Forget about all of that. Keep your eyes on the prize, baby. Because every believer in the body of Christ is gifted. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm gifted. Say, you may not, I may not look like it, but tell somebody I'm gifted. And when my anointing catches up with my gift, you're going to see something wonderful. Cain gave of the first of the ground, the fruit of the ground. He gave God his leftovers. Abel gave his best. Cain gave out of a stingy heart. Tell your neighbor, I got to give him the best that I got. All you got to do is do the best that you can do. Touch your name and say, really, that's all I can do. So why are you jealous and envious of her? And why are you looking cross-eyed at me? Don't you understand that a glass fool can't be envious of a pitcher fool? And a pitcher fool can't be envious of an ocean fool. You all fool with the gift of God within you. You can't handle more than you're capable of being full of. Does this make sense to you? So what God wants you to do is handle what he's given you. You can only be as full as your God-given container. I can't do no more than I'm doing right now. So baby, don't wait until night to work. Don't waste any time hating on anybody. Don't try to stab me in the back. If you ever got what I got, I tell you right now, you couldn't handle it. Not because I'm so wonderful, but because what God has for me, it is only for me. And what God has for you, and I promise you, God has something for you. God has good thoughts about you. I know the thoughts that I think, saith the Lord. Thoughts that are good. I got you. God said, you got a future. Come on and give God praise up in it. God has something for you to fill your individual container. Hallelujah to God. As much as you can get in that container, God wants to stuff it. But once, you, once it's filled, you can't get no more in that. Are y'all with me today? And it's only for you. So your job is to work while it's day. And don't sit on, tell somebody, don't sit on your gift. Here's my last scripture and I'm gone. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. The key here, brothers, and did y'all hear that? I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. The key here, brothers and sisters, is that it's not you anyway. It's his talent. Did y'all get that? I went and hid your seed in the ground. It's not your, it's not your seed anyway. It's God's talent. God has blessed you with that talent. What God wants you to do, say, use it. You perform and you excel because of his talents within you. You didn't do nothing to deserve it. He knew your container capacity because he's the one that fearfully and wonderfully made you. He knew what was going to happen. 
he knew the gift. Remember the, the message I preached a few weeks ago about the family anointing? God knows what we need, and he knows what the body of Christ needs, and he knows how far we can go. Everybody is not supposed to be a mega pastor. Come on, somebody. You cannot say Jake's is better than me because he got 3,000 or 10,000 more members than I have. God wants you to do what you can do where you are supposed to do it. Come on, can I get a witness, somebody? I don't feel sad or inferior or crowned in anybody's presence. I am God's anointed. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I can do whatever God says that I can do. I can have whatever God says is mine. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But tell somebody, start using it. Start using. Quit hating on other folk and start doing what you can do with the talent that you're going to do it. Well, Bishop, you know, uh, I tried to exercise my gift and it didn't come out right. First of all, there's two things going on here. First of all, it could not be your gift. Uh -huh. The sister asked me to sing a song at the, at the funeral. And I think, bless the girl, she, she was a little kid when I used to sing that song. And I had throat surgery. Since that time, the guy told me, he said, you'll never be able to hit the highs. So when I say, I will show you a mystery, that's how I sound now. It used to sound a whole lot better than that, didn't it? How many was around when Bishop Ford could sing? Okay, all right, okay, thank you. <laughs> Lion sings. Oh, God, help mercy. So first of all, it may not be your gift. So, so don't try to solo if you sing solo. <laughs> the second thing, the second thing, the second thing, the second thing, hallelujah to God, is that when God calls you, wherever he guides, he always provides. Amen? And so when you try to exercise your gift, Sometimes it doesn't always come out right the first time. And, and I give you this example. Uh, back in the day when I bought a lawnmower, I did. I bought a lawnmower, and I don't have it anymore, but I did buy, buy a lawnmower. And if you let that lawnmower sit up over the, over the winter, and in the spring you get ready to cut your grass, you're supposed to check the oil. Am I telling the truth? You're supposed to check the gasoline because the gasoline can get stale. They've been in there a long. You, sometimes you need to change the gasoline because the mixture, mixture is messed up. Well, once you've done all that, even after having done all of that, which means that you were practicing and you and the, 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 the song you was going to sing, you, you got with the minister of music, y'all were practicing and everything. But he knows that the first time that you pull that, that uh, string, uh, sometime, many times nothing happens, right? And the uh, <laughs> and then uh, uh, maybe off that forty. Uh, <laughs> what's going on here? This thing is trying to get tuned up, y'all. <laughs> and also, now every time you exercise and you go and you pull that thing, each time it'll get better. So that sometime during that spring, you'll just go in that thing and. <laughs> And that's what God says is going on in your ministry. You need to exercise it. The reason you sputtering is because you ain't used it, baby. Tell somebody say, I got to use what God gave me. Clap your hands and give God praise up in here. Don't sit on your gift. And don't tell me what you can't do. Don't tell me. I, you don't know my situation. You don't know my limitations. I don't care about your limitations. If God anoints you, it don't matter who you are. If God gives you a talent, it don't matter who. Now, I told y'all some, some months ago when we had the, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to sit down. And for our visitors, most of y'all don't know it. When I say I'm, I'm closing, it means absolutely nothing. Okay, okay. I told you some times ago that Sean Combs was LD a learning disability, rode the short bus home from school every day. 
Sean Puffy Combs. Now, somebody say he's limited, but he used whatever limitations he had. And God blessed him. Now he sits upon a $500 million empire, clothing empire. Y'all not saying nothing here this morning. Now, he's not using his gift for the glory of God. But just think what would happen if you would take that talent and, and, and rise up and say, look, I'm going to connect back with the church. I'm going to get myself together. I'm going to use, I know God has gifted me. I know God has put me in this place. Come on, somebody, clap your hands and give God and say, I'm giving him. I'm giving him the best that I got. And I don't care what you say. I am anointed. Come on, come on, set this touch your name and say, I am anointed. I'm, I'm, God wants to do something for your life. He wants to bless you in a real, very real way. Stand to your feet, my brothers and sisters, all over this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And they said, Mrs. Shipley, there's something wrong with your son. So what's wrong with him? They said he's slow. They said, praise God. They said he has a disability. They said, bring him here so that he can be tested. Something's wrong with that boy. And they tested that boy. And, they, and the psychiatrist said, you know, ain't nothing wrong with him. He just needs a little love. Can I get a witness, somebody? And I had this opportunity once because I got in trouble so many times, breaking and entering, strong arm robbery. Come on, somebody. somebody said, no, not you, Bishop. No, yeah. That was where I was at. And I got into so much trouble, I got sent away so many times before I was 15, six times, five or six times, sent away to all of these uh, maximum security detention centers. I said, no, Bishop, that, uh, that's good. you're making that up. No, that's me. I got sent away so many times. And one time I got out and I got this job. Right after I come back from Vietnam, I got this job at this youth facility. And the guy said, I want you to go in and clear out all of those records in there. And he said, they're just, they're old records from 15, 20 years ago. He said, they're no good. He said, I want you to throw them away. And I happened to be looking through the records, Elder Williams, and I saw a record that said Michael Ford's name. And I opened the record up, and the psychiatrist and the social workers began to give their diagnosis of how incorrigible, how utterly terrible, how, how he's not going to be able to be anything. And I thought to myself, I'm already somebody. Come on, can, can, you, can, you, can you witness to that? God has laid his hands on you. God has been good to you. It don't matter where you come from. It's a matter where you're going. God's getting ready to take you to another level. He's going to take the church to another dimension. I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my spirit. I'm just determined to give God the best that I got. By your heads, Father, in the name of Jesus, I stretch forth my hands to you, Lord God. I pray for this congregation. I pray that you help them not to be so angry about the things that have happened in their life, but to use those things as transformative powers to take us to the next level, to take us to another dimension. I speak peace over the lives of your people. I ask you to bless them in a mighty way. Father, lift us up. Forgive us of our sins and of our trespasses. Draw us closer to you as only you can. We love you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.